What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to learn how to speak like a Canadian, you know, and possibly a little about the Canadian accent. Um, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that Americans and Canadians are far more similar than I ever imagined, while also having the absolute most random, strangest differences between the two of us, uh, which is beautiful, of course. Fascinating, interesting, and beautiful differences between our cultures. And uh, there's a lot of stereotypes in the United States about how Canadians speak. And the more I have learned about Canada and some of the, you know, phrases, accent, if you will, and words and slang, uh, the more I realize that a little, a, a little bit of that is overblown, how Americans think Canadians speak. As a matter of fact, in a lot of American cartoons and comedy, there is a whole Canadian accent that I don't think really exists at this point. <laughs> and uh, how you say a boot is not as exaggerated as I thought. That's only very specific parts of Canada. And other stuff like that, like saying A, and all sorts of things. But I uh, was still very, very drawn to this video. This seemed very fun and interesting because I feel like there's a lot of things I probably say as an American that I don't realize is really American and, and a little strange to, to other people outside the U.S. And this, the exact same exists for Canada. I hate to break it to you, but there's a lot of weird stuff being said there. So... <laughs> So, so uh, I'm really uh, interested to see uh, what that is. So let's take a look. If the video will let me. I think if I refresh, then we can have our little how to speak Hi like a everyone, Canadian. Hi everyone, it's me. This week, I wanted to talk to you guys about some Canadian slang and phrases. Okay. We've already talked about British slang. Um, I mean, there's tons. We could do a ton of videos on British slang. But... Seeing as about 80% of my viewers are British, I mean, you're already familiar with British slang, so I thought it might be interesting to share some Canadian slang with you instead. Now, yes. this is actually... Well, I'm not British, but I am American. I'm just as equally uh, interested and amused by some good uh, Canadian slang. Let's hear it. Really difficult. Um, Canadian slang with you instead. Now, this was actually really difficult. Um, because I'm Canadian living in England, when uh. I hear English or British slang, I get in trouble for saying either. I'm sorry. When I hear slang living in England, it automatically stands out to me because it is foreign. It's yeah. not something that I'm used to. It's not yeah. slang that we say back in Canada. It really sticks out. But when I was trying to come up with Canadian slang, I realized <laughs> it was really difficult to pick out what is considered slang. Does Yes, I, I understand exactly what she's saying. It would almost have been much easier to have someone who is British go to Canada or someone, an American, go to Canada, just mingle a little bit, go around, wander around and listen, and then I would easily be able to just listen to people talk in Canada and be like, that's, that's an interesting choice of words there. Or be like, hey, that's slang, and write it down in my little secret slang notebook. But uh, I'm guessing she was able to come up with some good stuff. Does that make sense? I ended up asking some people. I did some research. I've come up with a list here that I'm going to go through. And hopefully we can learn some new Canadian slang. So without further ado, let's go. Okay. Now, the very obvious one that comes to mind is A. Yeah. We throw it on to end of pretty much any sentence. You know, I, yes, I've become a little more familiar with A. Uh, I don't think Canadians use it as much as I think. Maybe they do. <laughs> this is all just what I think. Uh, and it's basically to turn a sentence into a question, I think? It doesn't really matter. It tends to be sort of a rhetorical question. Um, you might say it to make sure someone's heard what you've said. Mm. Um, but, okay. but really, we like to sort of dot it in no matter what. Yeah, it's like a spice or a, a flavoring packet or some salt. Seasoning. Verbal seasoning. You sprinkle the A's in 
and it's lovely. Some people said that in it bruv is similar to A in terms of it's sort of a rhetorical thing you add it to the end of the sentence. But I have to greatly disagree. From everybody's comments, mm. it seems that in it bruv is um, a very low end slang. You know, it's kind of cringy, like, oh, I would never say that. It's sort huh. of looked down upon, whereas A, everybody says it. Your grandma. Okay, well, we're getting a unique perspective here because she said she is living in England as a Canadian. So she's actually relating some English and British slang, in it, bruv, to Canadian slang of A, but apparently they're not that similar. I think A is far more commonly used. Mother says it, your kids say it, your teacher says it, our prime minister says it, everybody says A, it's widely accepted, it's just part of our language, it's not looked down upon, it's just who we are. That is so interesting. I would have maybe been convinced at first that the use of A was an American fabrication, a stereotype, not real. But it is kind of a, it is kind of real. It is real. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It is full real, used in Canada, and I love it. In Canada, you probably wouldn't say mate. Um, that's not really mm. a thing. However, I have heard people say dude, which is more of a younger thing. I used to say dude a lot. But that is like a 20s and under sort of phrase. Huh. That's certainly a thing in the United States. Um, yeah, it probably is a younger thing. In the United States, that used to be associated with surfing culture. California surfer dude with long hair, long blonde hair surfing the waves would say, Dude, what's up, dude? And uh, that they don't say it like that now. But the word dude is... Uh, Fairly common in young kids in the United States. I've caught myself saying it now and again when I get carried away. But you might also hear people say bud or buddy. So something like, hey there, bud. Hey there, bud. You kind of have to say it with a, like an accent. Hey there, bud. I feel like I've heard this. I feel like I've actually heard this used in reference to how Canadians talk using the word bud. Gosh, I don't know if it was like a Family Guy thing or some other show or whatever. But, uh, Bud. Yeah, I have heard that in, in association with Canadians. Huh. Do you hear that? Or is that just me? So a sentence could be, hey there, Bud, it's pretty cold out there, eh? And yes, <laughs> it is cold out there. It's always cold. It's <laughs> Canada. Bundle up. Now, a really famous cafe, I guess you'd call it, in Canada would be Tim Hortons. But nobody ah, really- Ha! Ah, Tim Hortons. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't, uh, get a little carried away there, but every time there's a Tim Hortons reference in one of these videos on Canada, I just gotta acknowledge it, you know? It gets me a little worked up in a good way, you know? Tim, it's like this magical place that I've never seen, this magical utopia of Tim Hortons that I hear about, whispers of this secret place, this myth, uh, and here it is again. Really calls it Tim Hortons, we call it Timmy's. Timmy's are- Timmy's, okay, good to know. If, if I'm gonna assimilate into the Canadian culture and be uh, mistaken for a true Canadian, I gotta know that kind of slang, that kind Ah, heading to Timmy's, eh? They're everywhere. I come from a fairly small, town, I guess you'd call it, I would tend to call it a village, but it's not as small as like an English village. It's like a Canadian sized village. Anyways, mm. it's not very big. And we have two Timmy's. And I swear, if you stood in the parking lot of one, you can almost see the other one. Like they're <laughs> that close. It's ridiculous. Okay. But we love it. At Timmy's, you can get things like coffees, hot chocolates. There are ice caps, iced cappuccinos. It's like... Oh, I was going to say, ice caps. Do people in the U.S. say ice caps? Is this just a, a her thing, or is this a thing? Anyway. <laughs> it's slushy are incredible. If you watched my Canadian vlog, I went to Timmy's, oh. and I got a ice... Oh, look, they have little special Tim Hortons butter. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Ice cap and a sesame seed bagel, which their bagels are lovely. Just... Whoa. Uh... The way she said bagel, bagel, ba bagel, bagel, 
I don't even, that's not even on her, uh, that's not even meant to be part of her video, but she said bagel in a very, is that a Canadian way to say bagel? <laughs> I might as well point out the stuff that's, uh, how to speak like a Canadian that's unintentional. <laughs> Tap and a sesame seed bagel, which their bagels are lovely, just wonderful. And I got a pack of Timbits, which are really famous at Tim Hortons. It's like Ooh. these just little donuts. They're, they're, I think technically they're donut holes. Like, you know, the donut hole. Like That's what we call them in the U.S. Good old donut hole. Donut hole. Whatever. <laughs> they're fantastic. Another slang with Timmy's is you might hear people say they're going to Timmy's to get a double-double. So a double-double is a coffee with two creams and two sugars. Oh. Hmm. I feel like I've heard double in reference to coffee. Like maybe that's a coffee thing, not a Canadian thing, but double double? Almost sounds like a type of hamburger or something. <laughs> or is it two milks and two sugars? Anyways, you get a double double from Timmy's, but if you are going, get yourself an ice cap. They're wonderful. Ooh. Get yourself some Timbits. Okay, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Good uh, recommendations for Timmy's. Have a bagel and just chill. Now we also have a fair- Well, if I went to the counter and was like, can I have a, a sesame bagel? And they were like, what? What are you saying, eh? And I had to be like, a, a bagel. Can I have a bagel? And they went, oh, a bagel, okay. Fair amount of slang around um, alcohol. So a Mickey is like a smaller one. I think it's like 13 ounces. Wait, you can get alcohol at Tim Hortons? So a Mickey is a fair amount of slang around um, alcohol. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I knew I missed something. We're, we're not talking about Tim Hortons anymore. We're just talking about alcohol. I was like, what is, what is this? You're getting uh, this at Tim Hortons? Chill. Now we also have a fair amount of slang around um, alcohol. Okay. So a Mickey is like a smaller one. I think it's like 13 ounces would be a Mickey or, um, a 2-4 is a case of 24 beers. Okay. A Mickey. Never heard that. And what's interesting, in Ontario, I don't know if it's in the other provinces, but we have a beer store called The Beer Store. <laughs> that's that's the name of the store. <laughs> that's actually, I actually like that. I think... I know for a fact, if there was a store in the United States, a chain, called The Beer Store, I think that would do really well. Americans love funny little stuff like that. Oh, the name of the beer store is The Beer Store. I think that would do very well, just on the name alone. It's The Beer Store. So, a phrase you might say, um, hey bud, I'm gonna head up to the beer store and get a 2-4. Other slang you might hear, so in Canada we have a $1 coin and a $2 coin, just like in the UK. Right. Um, we call them loonies and toonies. I, I have heard this at some point along the line. Uh, I reacted to Canadian money a while back. Loonie and toonie, one and two, right? Loonies are just a gold, like a flattened pound coin, basically. They're thin, and they are called loonies quite simply because there is a loon on the front. In Canada- Oh, okay. I actually didn't know that. Uh, is the toonie for two, though, for the number two? Americans don't use um, coins for one dollar or two dollar coins. Americans don't use physical cash much at all. But if we do, it's bills. Never, we, we really, we have a dollar coin, but nobody ever, no weirdo ever pulls that out. That'd just be a little strange. Oh, we like our loons. Um, they're birds, if you're not familiar. Do they have loon? They must have loons in the UK. So we have loonies that have- I am vaguely aware of what a loon is. I couldn't picture it, but I knew it was a bird. Uh, but barely. The loon on them, we call toonies, toonies, quite frankly, because they're worth two dollars. Okay. And we couldn't come up with a better name. <laughs> now, lately, I've been listening to a Canadian podcast, which has actually really helped with this research because I've realized that we Canadians tend to say, you know, quite a lot. 
It's not something I ever noticed before, but huh. um, I talked to my boyfriend. He confirms that I say it a lot. You know, I wouldn't say that that's common for a lot of Americans, but it wouldn't be unheard of for someone to say, you know. Certainly no one says it a lot. So that is funny that uh, she's kind of identified that that's a... Uh, verbally something that Canadians do, like, more than they think. <laughs> and this podcast, my God, there were so many people on it that would say, you know. Again, it's kind of like a rhetorical, you know? So a phrase might be, it's pretty cold out there, you know, you better- Yeah, it's like totally something you'd say and you're not looking for- you're not really asking a question. You're not really saying, do you know? You know what I mean? You're, it's just something you tack on, you sprinkle onto your sentence to, for no real reason, just because it's fun. Better bundle up. And some people, I don't know, the accent is kind of like, you know. I have heard that, I think. That's from a Canadian somewhere at some point. I, I think I have heard it with that inflection, you know? You know, oh, I don't know, you know. Now, as a kid, we had a particular Canadian way of swearing. So, if you didn't want to say hell, because it's a bad word, you would say H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> this is a thing. This is a thing in the United States. H-E double hockey sticks was totally a thing when I was a little kid. That's funny. No, that's funny how a weird random thing like that is the same in Canada and the U.S. That's funny. Because hockey sticks are shaped like the, an L, so you're, yeah. you're spelling out hell, but you're using hockey sticks as an analogy. So yeah. as a kid, you might say, oh, you know, you're gonna go to H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> I don't know if the kids nowadays still say that, but... I don't know if they say that anymore either, but that was, ah, that was such a little, that's such a nostalgic kid thing. Wow. Back in my day, we did. Now, a very Canadian tradition is to go cottaging. Um, a lot of people tend to have cottages up north. It's not just for millionaires. Like, regular people have cottages. Uh really? Are Canadians rich? Or are the cottages really cheap? Or what, what's going on here? If you had, if you owned a second place, any real estate, a, a cottage, whatever it technically comprises a cottage. <laughs> I don't even, is that like a cabin? Is it small? That's like, to me, like you have, you're doing good. You're doing good in life. If you got your home and uh, your family and job, and then you got your little cottage getaway, that's special. That's exceptional in the United States. N most people don't have that. Um, so you might be saying you're gonna go up to cottage country. Um, that just means where lots of cottages are. A big one is Muskoka, if you've ever heard of that. Lots of cottages. So just picture, you know, like um, a small house or like a cabin on a lake. Uh -huh. You go tubing and swimming and... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it sounds great. Sounds amazing. Uh, it's just not something people do much or have the opportunity to do in the U.S. And fishing and you drink a lot. You bring up a bunch of cases, a beer from the beer store. Cottages, <laughs> honestly, cottages are so lovely. Another yeah. common slang, in May, we have a long- Hold on, hold on, I gotta see. Canadian cottage. I wanna see it, why not? Show me a picture, Google. Okay, this is gonna, I feel like this is gonna show me the most beautiful assortment of cottages. This cannot be standard. This is just like outrageously nice. Fun little cottages. Is this normal? This one. These are beautiful. Is it just Google? Choosing beautiful cottages? Okay, I'm jealous. You got me. <laughs> Long weekend, so people call it May 2-4. Common slang, in May, we have a long weekend, so people call it May 2-4. Oh. Um, so a typical phrase, you might say, I'm going up to the cottage for May 2-4. Oh. Now, this other one I noticed, um... I say for sure a lot. <laughs> now, at first I didn't notice it. Then my boyfriend started to make fun of me for it. Then I thought, maybe it's just me. But then I realized listening to this podcast, a bunch of the Canadians say it as well. For sure. I don't personally say that. Some people might. I, again, it's a thing where I wouldn't think it was strange. 
But if someone was doing it a lot, I'd be like, oh, that's a little weird. And it's definitely not the typical in the US, but someone might say it. And again, Canada seems to have a lot of these things. You know, for sure, A. Hey, just little things you tack on to sentences that don't really mean much. But it's, they're all very like polite and affirming the statement you just said. I don't know if that has to do with it. So just like you know, you kind of throw in for sure as well, like for no reason. But sometimes <laughs> it's really fun to say it in kind of this annoying way. So you go for sure, <laughs> which I, I know what it sounds like. So a phrase could be, it's cold out there, that's for sure. You better bundle up, eh? We talk about the cold a lot. That's the first thing that comes to mind. I actually okay. noticed my boyfriend started to say it. So naturally, he's going to get teased till the day he dies for saying it that way. Another one might be, he was definitely a talker, that's for sure. I can't wait for my holiday, that's for sure. It's raining out there, that's for sure. It definitely somehow fits into the Canadian trope of that Canadians are really polite and nice. Somehow saying, for sure, there's something very innocent about it. Very, like, nice. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. For sure. I'm heading up to cottage country come May 2-4, that's for sure. <laughs> Let me... Definitely makes you sound like you're very excited about <laughs> what, what you're about to do. You're very excited. I'm going to the beer store, that's for sure. Like, okay, you're sure about it. Got it. <laughs> you're gonna, It's gonna happen. Let me try this. Hey there, bud. I'm gonna head over to Timmy's. You want your double-double? Let me count up my loonies and toonies. I'm also gonna get a Mickey and probably a 2-4 from the beer store. We're gonna head up to Cottage Country for May 2-4. Oh. You know. Hope it's not too cold up there, eh? It's gonna be a great weekend, that's for sure. Okay, so that was basically the most Canadian statement ever? I bet, has any Canadian ever said those exact words in that order ever? That would just like summon the Canadian god or something <laughs> onto Earth if someone were to say that many Canadian things in a row, goodness. That's most of them, isn't it? Also what I love, I think, oh God, I should have researched. I think in Saskatchewan, I think it's Saskatchewan, um, a jumper or what I would call a hoodie. So like you put it on and it's got the hood. Oh, jumper. Is a, is a jumper a hoodie? I've heard the word jumper. I don't remember. Is a jumper a hoodie in Canada? That is called a bunny hug. A bunny hug. A bunny hug. I forgot about the bunny hug. <laughs> it almost really sounds made up. That sounds like a made up thing. Like, I don't believe that there's a bunch of Canadians running around talking about bunny hugs and wearing bunny hugs. It's a very silly two words, but you know, that, that's okay. Like, <laughs> uh, it's fun too, though. <laughs> how cute. Learning how to spell Saskatchewan as a kid was like the bane of my existence. Uh. It's basically like a bunny is giving you a hug and it's just wonderful. I wish we said that in Ontario, but we don't. Oh, okay. Obviously Canada- Okay, so only certain parts of Canada, bunny hug. Is a huge country. So while we do speak um, a similar English across the board, a similar accent across the board. We do have bits and pieces that we don't say in other places. So those right. are the first ones that came to mind. I hope you guys have learned something new and maybe you could sprinkle in a couple you knows and for sures and, you know, <laughs> expand your vocabulary. As always, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for over 3,000 subscribers. That's that's genuinely insane. If you're Canadian watching this, please leave your favorite slang. I oh, maybe, maybe I'll have to check that out. This was by Adventures and Naps. Did she say that she had 3,000 subscribers? Like, thanks for 3,000? She has 134 now. So that turned out pretty good. <laughs> this was by Adventures and Naps. This was four years ago. I gotta give that a like. That was a very good video. Very fun. As a Canadian, I thought all these terms were universal. <laughs> I could see where you'd make that mistake. Uh, 
Canadians say sorry. Yeah, that's another one. Sorry. I don't think she mentioned sorry. I'm Canadian. It's so weird to see all the slang I use every day and don't realize it. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh, so a lot of people saying that these are very accurate. Um, anything else? I'm just gonna, you forgot, I'm just gonna squeeze past ya. <laughs> every Canadian in every grocery store ever. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. This was, this was good. This was fun. I, uh, there were plenty of stuff in this that I, uh, was, had never heard of, not aware of. I thought I was really getting a grip on how Canadians speak, the phrases, the slang terms, the differences between the U.S. and Canadian speech. But there's still quite a few that I uh, was not aware of. Very, most were quite amusing, quite fun. I enjoy these. Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing in here was like vulgar and horrible or anything. Like a lot of uh, a lot of the terms that the young U.S. kids are using these days. But uh, this was very wholesome, very nice stuff. If you thought this video was wholesome and nice as well, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things in Canada I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.